So I really like the idea that comes uh, directly from Microsoft, and that's to use the concat function to multi-select, multi-filter. Um, so if we have initiate in yellow, initiate in green, we can then see I'm getting multi-filters uh, based on my Power BI report. And then when we wanted very complex filtering, you know, we could use sliders, um, use greater than, other functions. We can filter our gallery in order to filter our Power BI chart report. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today I wanted to talk to you about some of the issues I ran into with embedding Power BI inside of our Power Apps, trying to generate these URLs so we could filter it. Um, when I kind of looked at all the information online, it doesn't. There's lots of little blanks in there. There's lots of issues that you run into, and I'm going to go through each one of those and how you can embed Power BI in Power Apps and filter it correctly. Now. The first thing that is the number one issue is there is a setting. And this setting is right here. Allow new API equal true. So let's see if it's up here on the left side. Allow new API. You have to make sure this is true, else it's not going to filter. So if I change this to false, I get all my data. If I change this to true, I can then build a URL and filter my data through Power BI. So you have to make sure that allow new API option is true. That's just the first thing I wanted to go through. That was the biggest pitfall. Um, it's a new property that Microsoft had. So once you have that turned on, then let's go to tile URL. So right now I have all my data in SharePoint. Now you can have your data in Excel, you can have your data in Dataverse, SQL, you know, whatever you want to have it in but I have my data in SharePoint. So let's take a look at it. All right, so here's my data. I have, you know, a few list items, maybe about 15 or so I have listed here. And this is the data that I'm using to query in Power Apps through Power BI. So let's go back. All right, so we're back in Power Apps. And I have embedded Power BI into my app. So let me take this URL. I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut it out right now. And we're going to put a Power BI tile inside Power Apps. So you just go to insert, search Power BI tile, and put this in here. And you would just select your workspace, your dashboard, and it's in example chart for me. And then I have three different tiles. Now this is where I ran into another issue, right? So my tile was not appearing. It was driving me crazy. Why is my tile not appearing? Why is my tile not appearing? And just searching uh, Google forever. And let me show you um, how I made it appear. So I'm going to go back to Power BI. And I'm in my report. In order for these tiles to show up, first you have to add them to a dashboard. So I'm going to add them to a new dashboard just to kind of give me a new one. Uh, new dashboard. That's what I'm going to name it. So I'm going to pin each one of these to a new dashboard. The pin tool, and I'll put it in my new dashboard. Pin tool in my new dashboard. That's just the name of it. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my workspaces, and I'm gonna check out my new dashboard here. Now, if you notice, I have three tiles in here, and we can make this a little bit more space. Let's try and pull those tiles into Power Apps. So right now, I believe it's not going to even show up. So let's see, Power BI tile. We're going to come up in here, and I'm going to find my workspace. But now look, my tiles are not showing up. I'm telling you, I spent hours trying to figure this out. Only one of my tiles is showing up. Why is that? You have to rename your tiles. I'm going to save you a lot of time if you watch my video. Rename your tiles. I'm in Power BI in my dashboard. I'm gonna come e up to each one of these. I'm gonna edit details. Right here, the title, I'm gonna rename it to phase, okay? And I, I just put in also a subtitle too, so I'll put in phase. Project status, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna name it status. And budget, I think I can just leave this one because it was showing up. 
I'll just say budget here in the subtitle. And so finally, after I uh, saved the title names and I inserted and did a Power BI title, tile, and did a Power BI tile, I did my workspace, I did my new dashboard, and finally all three of my titles showed up. So that's what it took. It took me renaming it over and over and over for me to get it to work. Okay, so that was another issue that I ran into. Next, we build a URL to filter your data through the tiles. So if we go to the tile here, and I go to my tile URL, we can see this is my URL, and we can build in a filter here. So I'll zoom in, but you do ampersand filter equals, and then this is the name of your data set table. So for me, it's SharePoint, it's project list. So I can show you where this is, but this is the table names right here on the right side, project list. That's literally what we're filtering by, the table name. So if you were to rename it here, you know, you need to fix your Power Apps. So whatever you use here is what you need to use. And you need to be careful about spaces. When you start adding spaces, you're going to run into more issues. So we'll get into that too. In Power Apps, we're going to do filter project list. And I'm going to say when title is equal EQ, and I know one that I have, a project. And I think I have something wrong, right? But remember... I reapplied this um, power uh, this tile, so I have to come in here into advance, and I have to make sure that allow new API is on. And as soon as I turn that on, it then allows it to be filtered. So now, when the project list title is equal to a project, it filters. So I can do another one, you know, ABC development. I know that that's another name of my project. I can come here, instead of title, I can say um, project status. Now look at my column here, project space status. This is where spaces are going to drive you uh, crazy. So project underscore underscore x zero zero two zero underscore status is equal to red. So whenever you have spaces, you have to do the underscore X0020. That's why it's always best practice not to add these spaces in here. Now this is where I came into another issue. I wanted to come in here and I wanted to say, and, you know, project list, project uh, phase. I wanted to underscore X0020 phase is equal to uh, run. And every time I did that, it just would not work when I did multiple filters. And this may be a, um, an issue with tiles. Maybe you can't apply complex filters with tiles. Now, if you know different and you want to practice and you want to share it in the comments, please, I would love to hear from you. But I could not get the tile to accept multiple filters. But I have some ideas, right? I have a lot of ideas. So right here, this was to uh, filter that tile that I just could not get to work, right? They, they said you could do it a certain way, but right here, they're saying use DAX to filter on multiple values. Another way to filter on multiple values is to create a calculated column that concatenates the two fields to a single value. Then you can filter on that value. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Instead of trying to fight with that URL, I can use Power BI and concatenate and then filter on that. So we could come to Power BI and we could create a new uh, column. And I could say concat. I'm just going to name the column concat, concatenate. And we're going to say uh, project phase. and project status, project status, right? So we have a new column now. It's called concat. So I'll add it to this table here. And you'll notice it says initiating green. Now I can filter on that. Okay, 
So I got everything refreshed back in Power Apps. And now I have this uh, field in order to filter on. And I made the text a little bit smaller. That's just so I could fit everything in there. So now I can come to my tile property. And this is where I can use like multiple drop downs. And this is an intermediate level um, discussion. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of functionality here that I'm skipping over in Power Apps if you're new here. The phase and the status. Now I'm gonna concatenate them, or I don't even need to, actually. I'm gonna concatenate them here in my filter query. So I don't have a filter query in here yet. So I'm gonna say and filter equal, and I'm gonna use that concat field. So um, project list slash concat. I'm going to say equal to. So first let's uh, test it straight out. Then we're going to build it through the drop down. So I'm just going to say, uh, we'll go for the top one. Close red. So I do the phase first and the status. Close red right here on concat. So I'm just going to say close red. All right, so we filtered that out. So now let's build in the drop down. So I'm going to leave this single quote, double quote, ampersand, drop phase one dot selected dot value and drop status dot selected dot value and then we need an ampersand double quote a single quote and there we go now we have filtered on two values in a tile so I can choose run if anything's there so this is run green we've used that concatenate function in order to double filter in a tile this is directly from Microsoft. I feel like this is an easier way than trying to do it in the filter query. When I did it in the filter query, the URL in a tile, it would not work for me. So this was my workaround directly from Microsoft's help. The same thing goes for any complex query in Power Apps in a tile. As soon as I started making you know, more complex queries where I was saying in greater than, it would not work in the tile for me. Next, I went to uh, displaying the full dashboard of Power BI. And in order to do this, I did need a Power BI Pro license. So in order to do this, I did need a Power BI Pro license to display the full um, Power BI in my app. So let's kind of make some room in here and show you what I got. All right, so now, I want to pull in the full report from Power BI. In order to get the URL, I went to my dashboard. I went to my dashboard and I went to file and I went to embed report. Now before I didn't have Power BI Premium, I did not have all these options. As soon as I enabled Power BI Premium, I could then do a website or portal. So this is required. And then I took this URL right here. Here's the link you can use to embed. So I took that and I copied it. And then I went back to Power Apps. And then now I have the full working Power BI. And we have our filters here on the right side. Now this is where I could create complex queries. So if I wanted to do ampersand filter, um, let's say equals project list, project underscore x0020 status is equal to red that worked no problem now let's do one where the project phase is equal to close and project list project underscore x0020 phase and what was that equal to run equal to run now that worked also so I was like okay now I've got a full report. I want to do even more. So this is where I started doing the in function. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do an in function. Project list title. And this is just a way I can do it. In. And I'm going to say a project. A project. It works. Now let's add in another one. Comma. ABC. Development. Now I have two projects. So now I was like, hmm, you know, maybe I want to, 
you know, filter this off a gallery I have. Maybe I have a gallery here, so I added a gallery, right? Let me make it a little smaller and so everybody can see. And I was like, I want to build out that in function myself. So right now in my gallery, I have a filter. And it's, um, let's just say, let's just make it a little bit simpler. Let's just say project phase is equal to um, initiate. Okay, so we have a good bit of projects in there. So next, I want to build out that in function with the parentheses. So if we notice in here, I have parentheses, a project, ABC development. I want to build that out in a text value. So I pulled in a label. Let me just show you, here's my label. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna build this out. And let me just redo it right here. So I have a label. I'm like, okay, I wanna build that out. I'm gonna say concat. And what do I wanna concat? I wanna concat my gallery here. So this is gallery one dot, dot all items. And what do I want to concat by? I want to concat by the title and then the separator. The separator is a comma and a space. Okay, so we can see what I have here. So now I'm gonna add a single quote. All right, so now I have a space and a single quote only on the start. So now I want a single quote here. All right, so now I have single quote, comma, single quote, and you can see my label building out. So it's working on some of these, but not the end and not the beginning. So at the beginning, I want to do a single quote and. All right, so now I have a single quote there. Now I want and single quote here. So now I have a single quote at the end. Now I'm gonna add the parentheses, the parentheses here and the parentheses here. So now I have it able to be used with my in function. So this label one, I'm gonna pull in right here into my in function. I'm gonna say and, and, or double quotes, and label one dot text. I have my gallery on the right side and it's filtered by initiate. So now let's attach this gallery to my dropdown. So this gallery, the value is equal to drop. And this dropdown here is called drop phase dot selected dot value. So now I have a dropdown. And when I change it, it creates my label and filters the in. So whatever's in my dropdown, I can now view. So then I could, there's, there's so much more uh, complexity I could add to this. I could create my own gallery. I could say, oh, show this, this, this. Um, there's so much I can do here uh, with this power that I've added. You know, we could use sliders, um, use greater than other functions. We can filter our gallery in order to filter our Power BI chart report. So we're just building out the in function here using this label. And that way we can use multi filters until, so let's see the, if we go above 500 here, we can see now only the work right here at 6483 is then shown. If we go all the way back, we're gonna see all three of our items in the Power BI. This stuff's really powerful. There was lots of little gotchas in there, tons of little gotchas. So if this video was helpful to you, I spent a good bit of time researching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.